connection with God. And the words and the passages that I'm going to be referring to are all based upon the word of the Paul in the Greek. Because I made sure that I was not using any phileo or any of the other Greek words that are translated love. If we say we love an inanimate object, I used not too long ago that I love my crown Victoria. That I like to get a fix sometime. The Greeks have a word for that. We well, love an inanimate object. But let's think of this for a moment. First of all, I want us to be thinking about this idea that our love of God is not an action on our part as much as a reaction. And I, I, we, we don't love God because of what we love God for. It is because we realize that God loved us. Listen to what the Bible has to say. 1 John, the 4th chapter, the 10th verse. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation is a big word for sacrifice or an atonement. I want you to think about that for a moment. Our, the love that we're talking about is not a love that we have for God. Not that we love God, we do. But He loved us. And down in the 19th verse of the same chapter, we find John writing and saying, we love Him because He first loved us. We love God because He demonstrated His love for us by sending Christ into the world. We, we love God because of the fact that He did everything in His power. He gave His best that we might have life and have it abundantly. I think the most important thing to experience here, when we love God because He first loved us, what is the effect that that love has on our heart and our life? And I, I think we need to examine ourselves to be able to assure that this is the effect we have. And by the way, the, Greek, the, the King James Version, where it is translated charity, that is usually the Greek word of the law, or the Greek word that we're using for love. The very first thing I want to say is that if we love God, we are going to keep His commandments. I think obedience is one of the most important areas of our love to God. We obey His Word because we love Him. I, I, I can think of several scriptures. If you remember in the uh, passage of the Sermon on the Mount, the uh, seventh chapter, where the, Jesus said, Some will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied my name? Have we not done wonderful works in your name? Remember what Jesus said, Depart from me, you that work with iniquity. He that doeth the will of the Father. We must do the will of the Father. Remember that also Jesus another time uh, some people came to him and called him Lord. He said, why do you call me Lord when you don't do the things that I say? I think the idea of surrender to the will of God is highly important in our expression of love to God. I knew we go home, we find that sacrifice is also important. We need to learn to sacrifice that God's will may be done. Remember what Matthew, uh, Jesus said in Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 24 through 26. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Wow, that's hard. Deny yourself. Forget that you are important and you are important and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it for what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul let me simply say that I firmly believe that the most important thing that we have in life is the promise of eternity. The most important thing we have is the idea that God has promised us an experience of eternity for all existence. 
And that ought to be the number one priority. We go on. It is the motivation to do the will of God. I, I love 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, 14th verse. It says, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge of one God for all, that we're all dead. We are motivated. You go to St. Mary's Hospital, and, and you will see on the wall and, and figure something there about the, uh, the uh, constraining of the love of God that God's love does to constrain us. Why are we motivated to live the Christian life? Because of His love. We go on, and it's a fruit of the Spirit. If we possess the Spirit, it will be one of the first. And I think it's the first fruit that is mentioned uh, here. That the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness, and faith. First one mentioned as far as the fruit of the Spirit. Love is the greatest. And by the way, you might want to correct that word in the notes that I passed out. Love, L-O-V-E, not life. Love is the greatest. First Corinthians 13, 3. And now by faith, hope, and love. These three. But love, but love is the greatest. But the greatest of these is love. Have you ever thought about why? Love is the greatest of faith, hope, and love. Have you ever thought about that? Number one, God is love. When we have that kind of love, we have God in our lives. And second, and I think this is one of the main reasons why Paul said this. Love is the only one of the three that will last for all eternity. I think that is an important thought. And love brings great rewards. Listen to what the Bible says. It said, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the ninth verse. But as it is written, I have not seen, <clears throat> nor ear heard, neither has entered in the heart of man the things which God has promised for them. And notice those last few words. To them that love him. When we allow love to control our life, this agapa, this divine spiritual type of love. It will there. And by the way, this is demonstrated in our lives. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 43, 448, and I'm not going to read it. You can read it at your own leisure. And Nancy, you can put it up on the screen if you want. We find the idea that love your enemies. Love your enemies. Oh, we don't have any enemies. I think we do. I think our enemies are those who are non-Christian. I, I think our enemies are those who profess some other religion other than Christianity. But we need to love them and to pray for them. And have the same compassion that Jesus had for them when he went to the cross and died for them. And not only that, but we are loved of brothers. First John, the fourth chapter, verses 11 and 12. For love of God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. For no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. Brothers and sisters, I think one of the most important things for us to realize is the mere fact that the closer we are to God in our love for God, the more and the stronger this love will be. I've used this as an illustration many times. If you're in a dark room and have a flashlight, and you're some distance from that a mirror and you shine that flashlight into a mirror, it will reflect some of the light. But the closer you get to the mirror, the stronger the light will be. The stronger the light will be. The closer we are to God. The more we love God and let Him dwell in our hearts and our lives, the more that love will be seen by other people. I firmly believe that everybody here this morning loves God. 
I believe that there might be varying, various degrees by which we walk with God and are close to God. But I think the challenge is before us that when we are closer to God, we can receive a greater power to overcome. We can receive a greater power to express that love to others. And we can do, have a greater power to demonstrate that love in our life. James says, draw a of God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw a of God. Draw a of God. We're going to be singing our song of invitation, softly and tenderly. If there's any here that needs to make a decision for Christ, whatever it may be, to be, become a member of the congregation by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. To transfer your membership from another congregation. To rededicate your life and ask for prayer. Whatever it may be, will you come as we stand to sing? First verse only.